So normally, for the people who haven't been coming any of the other weeks, um, I usually talk about five minutes beforehand. We give like soul winning tips and just just little things to keep in mind and remember when we go out soul winning, just to be a you know it's a little helpful reminders or whatever. Um, we've gone over a bunch of things already, just in general on avoiding um, getting into debates and things like that. So, but today what I want to talk about is just after somebody gets saved. And really, especially out here in this neighborhood, because in this neighborhood, there's not very many people that want to talk, honestly. I mean, we're going around, we're knocking on doors, and people don't even come to the door, and when they do, usually they just, you don't get into very many conversations. So um, I'm a little bit more inclined to spend even more time with people that are talking with us. So especially after somebody gets saved, um, there's, there's three things that I like to, to bring up. And I don't always bring up all three. Sometimes their time is limited, sometimes they have to go. Um, but, so you go through the whole plan of salvation, the person gets saved, right? So what do you do then? One thing I like to do always is, again, just, just emphasize church, coming to church. You know, so just bring up again, maybe if they're going to another church, you might want to point out, well, hey, look, you know, your church, you know, didn't show you how to be saved or whatever. You're like, you didn't know this. Or if they seem really, really into their church still, maybe invite them out to a Wednesday night. Say, hey, you know, we got Bible studies on Wednesday night. 7 o'clock, why don't you come out and, you know, and visit our church then? And uh, really, really try to try to get them to come. And one of the things I just started doing recently is if when someone gets saved, ask them if you be, if they're interested in coming to church. A lot of times people say, well, yeah, I'm interested in coming, coming to your church. The next question is, like what I'll ask them is, well, if I were to come and pick you up, would you come to church with me? If I were to come and, and, and get you? And if they say, yeah great, then, you know, I get their, their phone number and try to get more information to say, okay, well, look, I'm going to call you on Saturday night or Sunday morning or whatever and, and just confirm that if you want to come, then I'll, I'll come and pick you up. And that's a really good way to get people who might have been on the fence or just say, oh, yeah, I'll come, and then they just never come to kind of solidify that and just say, okay, yeah, now, now they're going to come. I mean, obviously, some people will just be like, well, no, that's okay, no thanks or whatever, but um, that's a good way to try to get them to come to church. The other two things I bring up are baptism and the King James Bible. And usually I kind of hit these both at the same time. Because I'll bring up baptism and say, okay, now you're saved. You know, you know there's nothing you can do to lose that. And, uh, but I want to show you about, about being baptized. And I just give a brief explanation and say, you know, maybe you've been baptized before, I don't know. But um, the Bible teaches that we need to be saved first and then get baptized. And I always bring them to Acts chapter 8, where it's, a, you know, it's a Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch, where, where he explains, you know, you know, here's water, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And he said, well, you know, if thou believest all, with all thy heart, thou mayest. And I use that to explain, well, look, see, you have to believe first before you get baptized. And I give a little explanation on baptism, but then I use that to segue into the King James Bible issue. And I'll say, you know, do you see how important this answer was? And I just kind of say, you know, in, in all the modern versions, that, that verse doesn't even exist. That's not even there. That teaches that you have to be saved before you get baptized. So I use kind of both to go hand in hand because they're both really important issues. You know, doctrinally, once a person gets saved, I mean, they should be getting baptized as soon as possible. And then the same thing, you know, if, you know, they don't have to come into church or whatever, get them started at least on the, on the King James issue and maybe point out a few things to them in that regard. And the good thing is, too, with the invitations we're using now, uh, one of the pages on the insert has a whole section on, on why we're King James only, why we use that. So you could also use that to help if you don't know all, you know, like very much specifically about the issue. I mean, I'm sure everyone here has settled on that, but like, if you don't have it in your mind already, like, what can I show them? There's a good little guide in that insert, and you can say, well, see, look at what it says right here, and there's good examples in there that you could point them to. And kind of and kind of lead them on that. Uh, so I, it, it's a good idea, like I said, especially if they get saved. Spend a little bit of time, invest a little bit more time with them if you can, and if if they can, um, to get them, you know, started in the right direction. I mean, yeah, it's great that they're saved. Amen. I mean, that's the point of going out soul winning. But let's also try to try to work as much as possible to get them to to grow a little bit and to come and, and do the first things that are required. I mean, get them baptized. Get them, you know, get them on the right Bible. And see if you can get them into church. Those are those are the three things that I'll always, you know, I don't always hit all three. You know, I try to I try to hit them, 
It just kind of depends on the, the flow of the conversation, how much time they have, and stuff like that. But, but those are three issues that I normally try to bring up and get them established. And it's also good to have a King James Bible with you to give away. I mean, we give away other things, and um, you know, I usually ask someone, "Do you have a King James Bible?" Most people don't even know what you're talking about. They just have a Bible. They don't. Most people aren't even familiar with the different versions and stuff. I ask him like, does this does it say like sound old like thee and thou or or does not have that stuff or or I just ask him, hey, can you go get it for me? If it's a, you know, I say, hey, do you have do you have it available? Can you show me real quick? And then go into that issue with them. So, um, yeah, that's it. So if uh, you do get someone saved, just try to try to remember those those three things: church attendance, baptism, and King James Bible. So, all right, is everybody almost done with their? Or is done with the ice cream? It didn't take long, it was good.